Hey guys, today I'm going to encourage you to become a professional Magic the Gathering YouTuber. And I'm going to use Tolarian Community College since he is the biggest YouTuber. I'm going to use his video and try to guess of how much money he makes a year. I think it's in it's north of $200,000. And as a big spokesperson, it makes sense that he deserves $200,000. Now, the word deserve is kind of interesting because most people think of making Magic the Gathering videos as a hobby, but he treats it as a job. His production quality is extremely high, and I've always felt like Wizards of the Coast should just pay him because he's doing so much good for their community. Now, on the flip side, you have MTG Headquarters, right, trying to burn everything down, which I've talked enough about. But I'm going to do some MTG finance on Magic the Gathering YouTube and content creators. In the finance community, the only people who make guaranteed money are people behind paywalls or people asking you for to donate to their patrons relentlessly. And if you don't donate to your patrons, they ignore you for the most part. So let's talk about some math and how much money Tolarian may or may not be making because that is a financial issue and he is a Magic the Gathering channel. And it is interesting to talk about how much the largest Magic the Gathering channel on YouTube makes. I would guess he makes a quarter million dollars. And the reason I'm getting there is Patreon doesn't really show you how much he's getting anymore, but he has about 2,500, a little more, 2,600 fans. Uh, patrons and assuming those people donate I don't know ten dollars on average maybe some donate more some maybe some donate less I'm not sure but even assuming they donate five dollars on average he's taking home over ten thousand dollars from just patreon now YouTube is interesting because uh, we have some data I have my own data and I have so I my channel is about one tenth the size of Tolarian's channel and it gets about one eighth, uh, it gets way less views because Tolarian's videos, they stack views. And that's really important to understand is he's still getting tons of views on older videos when a drama channel like this one right now is not going to, or MTG Finance channel, for instance, the financial news is old. So therefore, people are not going to watch a video talking about cards for two year, from two years ago. So his his production is quite high, plus it has longevity. So uh, this amount seems about right for Rudy. He should be making at least about $8,000 from YouTube money a month. I would be shocked if he wasn't making that much. So another 100K from YouTube. Let's say 100K or 120K from Patreon, 100K from YouTube. And then there's Card Kingdom sponsorships. There was previously a Puka Trade sponsorship. Um, there was, there's other sponsorships that I, it's hard to tell. I mean, maybe he's getting just free stuff and maybe he's reviewing it. Maybe he's buying it with his own money. It's not clear to me when he does a product review of something like Ultra Pro, did Ultra Pro uh, send him the free stuff? Did Ultra Pro give him other free stuff? Um, it's not clear to me if the video, how much of the stuff that he received he paid for it because that's kind of the key. Now, on the other side, you have Jeremy and they're using Jeremy's uh, full, full name and trying to get information on his employer. Hashtag end MTG toxic. Is this really for real? This, his, ha his name is toxic MTG and then his hashtag is end. Oh my gosh, these people. Anyway. I probably shouldn't say these people. I should say these Twitter users. That's probably a lot safer to say. Anyway, so at the end of the day, you have two very, very widely um, interesting parts. And I think it comes down to money. Uh, it is quite interesting to see someone like Tolarian, Tolarian make $250,000. I have been on record a year. I've been on record saying that he deserves the money and but he's going to take a tax and he's going to take a tax from people like Jeremy because I'm sure Jeremy doesn't make a quarter million dollars from making Magic the Gathering videos. And to be quite honest, not many of us make even 
one tenth of that or one one hundredth of that amount of money a year. And that's where you have the animosity. Uh, you have on one side Tularian making a quarter million dollars, on the other side you have Jeremy who has been blackballed and his Magic Online collection has been stolen. So when someone shows this, a picture of Hitler and Tularian, Jeremy retweets this without even thinking about the consequences, right? So the full image, I'm not going to show it to you, but it compares Jeremy to Hitler and you know, why is Jeremy doing this? I don't really know, but that's the stem of every issue we have in the magic community. I know it's the stem because before money came into the system, we were all good friends. As soon as money came into the system, then people started fighting, people started selling play mats, people, I don't know if you remember that, but people were selling play mats like, like pancakes pretty much, right? And I don't know. I mean, I always felt that Tolarian was very good for our community and the fact that he can be a full-time YouTuber making a quarter million dollars seems very good to me. I feel like that will have a positive influence because that's going to have other people uh, create videos, create channels, and do the more channels we have, even if I don't disagree, even if I disagree with all of them, not all of them, <laughs> disagree with the majority of, no, disagree with some of them. There we go. Um, I still like watching them and I watch other smaller channels. I really do. It's crazy to me. Um, it is truly crazy to me that we are in a situation where the, I, I think it's another, it's another case, um, to understand the whole Tolarian versus MTG headquarters, you all don't still understand Magic the Amateurings kind of promotion. So Tolarian promoted a lot of people. He never promoted me. I don't, I think he promoted Jeremy's Game Finder app and he promoted M Magic the Amateuring pretty much for uh, until a year, even though people, people, uh, some people didn't like it. I think they're fine. They're not really for me, but I can see that they would have wide appeal to many people. So when you're the biggest channel and you're making a quarter million dollars, who you choose to retweet, who you choose to like, who you choose to uh, promote the videos does have a major effect because you are the biggest channel. It's not as easy to say that Tolarian doesn't have responsibilities like that. And HQ also has it as well. And it used to be a time where people promoted each other, promoted small channels all the time. That no longer is the case. I feel like we should go back to that time, but the reason being there's only X amount of money into the system. There's only X amount of Patreon dollars. There's only X amount of YouTube ad revenue. There's only X amount of sponsors. So if you're promoting someone else, it probably means you are hurting yourself. That is the rationale many people have. I don't believe that's true. I feel like as the community grows bigger and well, the community is shrinking. So another additional factor to this is very simple. The community, according to Mero, has shrunk millions of players recently. So the views are getting tighter, the money is getting less, and if you threaten someone's livelihood, and their livelihood is a full-time Magic the Gathering YouTuber, watch out. Watch out. So anyway, that is it. Bye, guys.